We are celebrating. Welcome. Thanks for joining us for our Power Hour. We are celebrating the life of Dr. Martin Luther King and his legacy. This Power Hour is devoted to information from enthusiastic voters, members of our community, and those who are engaged in voter registration, elections, and everything like that. If you are interested, however, in learning more about the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we encourage you to visit the King Center in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, to get more information. And don't forget to vote. So welcome everybody for, remember as we always say for Dr. King said, let my people vote. Mm -hmm. And back in June of 1965, the Voter uh, Rights Act linguished in the House Rules Committee after passage in the Senate. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote a letter to the New York Amsterdam News urging its passage as the first step to ensuring access to the ballot. The Senate had passed its version of Voting Rights Act, but the House Rules Committee was hold up was holding up in legislation when King wrote an editorial in the Black-owned New York Amsterdam News on June 19th, 1965. The House panel approved the bill 12 days later, and President London B. Johnson signed Congress' final rendering into law on August 6th in the Capitol. King was attendance and received one of the pens that LBJ used. Here you can see Dr. King and his wife, Coretta Scott King, at the polling location, using the power that they worked so hard and fought for so that they could vote. Don't let your rights be wasted. You vote, it's your voice. Everybody votes. Don't forget to vote. So very true. But you know what? Even after the Voting Rights Act became law back in 1965, in 1975, people still marched in the streets to expand those Voting Rights Act. The bill was amended. Congress expanded that act scope to protect language like minorities from voting discrimination. Mm -hmm. Congress expanded Section 2 to explicitly ban any voting practice that had a discriminatory effect respectively of whether the practice was enacted in acted or operated for discriminated purposes in layman's turn basically this amendment was designed to protect all citizens in their civil and legal rights providing for equal treatment in public accommodations and public transportation providing provi prohibiting too much coffee today exclusion from jury service <laughs> so everybody Use your legal rights. Go out and vote. Pledge to vote. Mm -hmm. So sadly, we have now in 2022, which started several years ago, our voting rights are rapidly and steadily being suppressed nationwide. And this map just shows you where the voting rights are now requiring identification, where they're restricting people from voting. Uh, don't do don't don't let this happen. What we need to do is we need to pledge to vote. We need to register our entire family to vote. And we need to make sure that these people who are changing the laws that are going to prohibit or impede your ability to exercise your right to vote are voted out. Don't forget to vote. So very true, Roshana. That's why the National Parents Union delegates formed the Every Family Votes campaign to assure our neighbors, communities, and countries are all made stronger when every family votes. So join the National Parent Unions and other organizations around the country who are working to get the voters registered, spreading the words in their communities, casting those all too important ballots flex those voting muscles right. in every election, local, state, and federal. We are counting on you to do your part and show everyone that every family votes. So pledge to vote. Encourage your kids, your tias, your uncles, your neighbors, your comadres to register to vote. Pledge to vote in all elections. Get out the vote. And when we all vote, we have results. 
the National Parents Union, in partnership with When We All Vote, encourages every family to vote. So you can do today, during our broadcast or after, verify your registration or get voter registration information for your state. Be clear, if you are not registered where you currently reside, and if you are in a state where they are restricting voting and requiring specific identification, make sure that your registration matches your ID. Pledge to vote. Visit the National Parents Union website. Join the National Parents Union and we will give you resources and voter registration support. When we all vote, we win. All right, everybody. Are everybody fired up now? It fired is up. power hour time. <laughs> Um, we have a Power Hour Disruptor list, as you can see here, um, that'll be joining us throughout the event, behind the scenes, and, you know, waiting to come on and share their stories. Special thanks to our When We All Vote partner, but we'd like to introduce our other co-host here, Jacqueline Slade, who is a freshman majoring in political science at John Hopkins University and Peabody Institute and who's also an intern for the Hopkins Boat. Welcome, Jacqueline. Hey. Hello. Hello, everybody. Glad to see everyone here. Thanks and for joining I'm us. I'm glad to be helping on this event. <laughs> All right, everybody, make sure you grab your pens and pads and take note. This is Power Hour, you know, the voter registration. We will have many guests come up on here, so you want to take notes of who, you know, is coming out here. They're going to have some great stories and great information to share out with you. So let's bring in some of our disruptors who are on ready to share their stories. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Well, well, there's one of our biggest disruptors. We got Carrie Rodriguez, president of the National Parents Union, as well as joining her, yeah. trustee Chris Gonzalez from Texas, Spring Branch ISD Board of Trustees. Of course, Carrie's calling from uh, Massachusetts, as well as Maritza Gertie, who is our National Parents Union Northeast Regional Organizer uh, from PA, from Pennsylvania. And we also have our Commissioner Sarah Viego from New Jersey, Plainfield Board of Education. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Thank you. So as we go into, we like to ask that very important question, you know, what does voting mean to you or what is your memory of voting? And we're going to start with Carrie Rodriguez. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I just want to point out, look at all the lovely ladies <laughs> leading this effort today. Same. Isn't it always mamas that step up and get this work done? We organize, we mobilize, we make a difference, we change our country. So I just want to start off by uh, addressing that little elephant in the room. Anyway, uh, again, my name is Carrie Rodriguez. I'm with the National Parents Union. I am also um, a member, an elected member of the Massachusetts Democratic State Committee. I'm the former chair of the Somerville Democrats, uh, former head of the Women's Caucus of the Massachusetts Democratic Party as well. So voting has always been very important to me and my family. Um, you know, my I come from a family of immigrants from three different places who all came to this country seeking a, a new life and access to the American dream. And so from the very beginning, I can remember being a very little girl and looking up on the wall of my grandmother's or, or my vovo's house and seeing a picture of JFK and a picture of the Pope, you know, and, and voting was a very special day and it was very important to us. And it was part of our, our way of life in our family. So, um, and it wasn't just voting for the president. It was really getting involved, you know, at the local level. And I learned very, very early on that, Actually, our municipal elections are the most important elections because that's where the biggest decisions that really impact our families directly um, are being made. So, so important for us to participate in that process. And, and it's kind of a family tradition. I have had uh, members of my family who have been state representatives and state senators and school committee members and city councilors. And, you know, it's just, you know, part of, of what we do and how we give back. So, Voting is very special and important to me, and I'm trying to make sure that my kids view it as important as well. Got myself muted there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gary, for sharing your story. 
uh, Representative or Trustee Gonzalez, can you go ahead and share your story and let us know what, you know, how is voting important to you or share your fondest memory about voting? Yeah, it's such a pleasure to be here, guys, today. Um, I think many, as Wendy, and you know, introduced me, I am a trustee in Spring Branch ISD. I do want to recognize that, of course, I represent my voice, right? Not an entire um, community, much less all of the board. Um, but it, I'm super excited to be here and talk about voting, which is as we all, as for many of us, right, a passion for for all of us in our hearts. And we also recognize that many people are not taking um, advantage of the power of their voice, right? And how do we get more people to recognize that their vote truly does count? So because we know that many people often think it doesn't. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, my earliest memory of voting would have been in college, but to be honest, my most profound memory of voting is when I had the opportunity to vote for someone that I knew, right? When I had, and it was always local politics. You know, we think when we go in to vote, when, it's particularly when we're younger, this is about the presidential election. This is about taking about our country, but we know that politics and action happens at the community level and at the most local place you can get. Often our city councils, sometimes our school boards, there are many other representatives that actually have a deeper effect on us. Um, so my strongest memory is when I had that chance to really get to know candidates, right, to have, be a voice in their ear for the things that mattered to me before they were elected and then show up on election day or even better, right, early voting to make sure that I didn't get stuck in a line or rained out for any reason and unable to make it to the polls. Um, to vote for someone who I knew could represent what mattered to me. Um, so that's what I would urge people to do, right? To, to get out and meet candidates and to tell them what matters to them because that's when you influence politics um, and you can be a change in your community. All right, that's so very true, very true. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, next up, we have um, Commissioner Virgo, if I'm, am I pronouncing that name right? Sometimes I always ask. <laughs> yeah, it, it's Virgo, actually. Like the Zodiac. Virgo, okay. I got my little accent, either Texas or my Mexican oh, accent. Oh, that's okay. So excuse that's me okay. on that one. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks very much for having me today. Um, the members of the National Parents Union, for Shauna, Wendy, for extending the invitation, especially for such an important event on such an important day. I'm very glad to be here. Um, I'm Sarah Virgo. I am a healthcare professional um, and an elected official here in Plainfield, New Jersey uh, for the Board of Education. Um, and like prior panelists have said, I represent myself, not the entire Board of Ed, um, but I'm also an avid voter. Uh, I founded an organization uh, about 20 years ago called the Outreach Foundation. And we oversee a variety of community events, uh, one in particular being the Virgo Coalition for Votes. So really making sure that we are trying to encourage as many folks as possible to register to vote and then making sure that we make it as easy as possible for everyone to participate on election day. So any, you know, voter suppression, trying to get ahead of that um, and then just making it really easy on the election day for people to go in and cast their votes. Um, my first memory of voting is actually was as a spectator with my parents. Um, so. My father is a really conservative libertarian and my mother was a very liberal Democrat. So election, you know, campaigns, everything was very intense in my house. So we usually did most dinners with debates and it allowed me to really see that, um, you know, I think if you grow up in a home where, grow up in a home where everyone is a Democrat or everyone is a Republican, you kind of are only seeing one side of things, but it really afforded me the opportunity to see that there are so many opinions on each issue and each candidate really can offer a variety of things. So you have to educate yourself. Um, I registered to vote on my 18th birthday, birthday with my social studies teacher. And it was the only thing I wanted to do on my 18th birthday was to vote. I mean, it was, everyone else wanted to participate in other now adult activities, but I just wanted to vote. Um, so within two months I had the opportunity. So I, I voted, I, I still have my first I voted sticker and since then, I have never missed an election, whether it's local, federal. I mean, I've, I've participated in all of them. Um, locally, though, I think my fondest memory of voting was uh, in our last election. I ran for office, and part of that was obviously knocking on doors and canvassing. And someone, this woman approached me. She was Spanish-speaking in our town, and 
She had never voted. Her parents had never voted. Uh, she was very intimidated by the process. And I really didn't think of it from that perspective that people might be intimidated. Um, so she asked me sort of what to expect. And I, I kind of assumed she meant what to expect and how to register, but she really wanted to know what will they ask me when I get in and how do I vote and what buttons do I press? And so walking her through that and giving her information on the candidates was really um, a lovely moment for me. And she happened to come in on election day at this polling place where I was handing out cards and she had her sample ballot. She had her ID. She was very excited to go in and cast her vote. So afterwards, she came out and said that, you know, she really appreciated me speaking with her and that she felt very empowered to vote. And that was very emotional for me because voting is so important and it gives a voice to the voiceless and really it levels the playing field. That's the exciting part of democracy. You know, you have to have the support of the people and the voters make all the difference. So it's easy to complain about things and elected officials. Um, but if you aren't voting, then it's it's just complaining and it's not going to get you anywhere. So I, I love that campaigns like this exist. And, um, you know, I'm happy to do my part to make sure that we're all going to the polls and showing up and and registering as many people as we can to participate. So thank you. So, so thank you so much for sharing your story there and encouraging others to vote with this power hour. Um, so next up is we have Maritza Gerti. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Philadelphia. Um, I have two quick memories. First is for my, my mom. Uh, my mother was not born in this country. She's from the Dominican Republic. And for anyone that's watching here that is first generation, um, you know that our parents may or may not have gotten citizenship. So once they did get it, that was one of the first things that they did. So I remember my mother being very excited about being able to get her citizenship granted and then being able to vote. So she instilled that in me because in her country, every time voting came about, it was a bit, it, it still is to this day a bit chaotic to the point where there are like strikes, gas strikes, businesses shut down in protest for one party or another to keep people and intimidate them to keep them from voting. So being in this country and fighting for the right to vote and maintaining it is very important. My second memory, I wasn't of age to vote yet. Um, I was only in high school and I'm sorry, my dog is barking. Um, Jesse Jackson was running for president and we were so excited because he went to our high school in Passaic, New Jersey and he spoke in a packed gymnasium. He spoke to all the students and we act, a lot of us actually volunteered on election day to be at polling locations. And I was like, I wish I could vote for him, but I was still supportive of him just from hearing him speak. So that was a very amazing memory that I'll never forget to this day of that happening, of when someone that was definitely still is a civil rights activist, a voting rights activist, a human activist, actually went to our little city in North Jersey and spoke to young people about the importance of maintaining the ability to vote. So all of you that are watching that are U.S. citizens that have that privilege of being automatically able, entitled to vote, please register, ask your friends to register, take your friends that can by the, by the car load, by the van load, make sure to exercise that right to vote. Your voice is important. And also for those that are unable to vote, make sure you do know your status because you'd be surprised. It may have been because you are a returning citizen and you don't know your status, check it out, go onto the website, look for the link. You may be surprised that in the state you live in, depending on how long ago it was that you returned, you may be able to vote. Thank you. That is so very true, Maritza. Thanks for t you know reminding everybody that if you, it's to exercise your right to vote, even if you're not able to register to vote. There are so many things that you can do. Thank you so much, everyone, for your stories. This is Power Hour, you know, encouraging everybody to register to vote or even checking your voting status um, on here. Yeah. It's also so, important, too. Can you hear me, Wendy? Yeah, so besides your, 
making sure that your address is correct. We have that ability through National Parents Union to make sure your address is correct. And believe it or not, the primaries are important where you primary. And if you don't have the correct party, they're, they're not going to let you vote. And it's it's hilarious. If you go to motor vehicles here in New Jersey and you're not reading and you click the button, you might end up in the Green Party or some other party. And when it's time to vote, they're going to say, no, you can't vote. And then you're going to call me and I'm going to say, sorry, I can't help you because like, right. So use the resources that we have afforded today and share them. Please don't forget to vote. Yes, share those resources, share the link that we have. It'll be in the comment field as well as you're going to see it on the screen where you can go and register to vote. <clears throat> and as well as um, encouraging others, spread that information, that very important information on, you know, voting the people that best represent you and your community. Is that right, Roshana? <laughs> Listen, vote your interest. I believe wholeheartedly. If you don't vote, don't complain. <laughs> That's very true. That's one thing my dad used to always tell me. <laughs> don't complain if you ain't going to be a voter. But if you can't vote, there's so many ways you can do things. You yes. know, my mom was one of them. You know, She couldn't vote at first, but she did a lot to support that. So there's so many things that you can do Agreed. Um, when it comes to registering to vote. So we want to thank our first group of panelists, and we're going to be bringing in our next group of panelists. We have uh, four awesome panelists who are going to join us. Representative Burgos from District 197 in Pennsylvania, House of Representatives. Christy Moreno, National Parents Union, Midwest Regional Delegate. Shay Mackin from Texas, NPU, Policy Chief and Graphic Designer. And Colleen Cook, our favorite NPU Director of Partnerships. They're going to be joining us. And look at you all. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. So this is our power hour. And we are just encouraging you to share with those who are watching your enthusiasm for voting. If you would like to um, share why voting is important to you and or the fondest memory you have of voting. We're going to start with hmm, Shay. How about you start with it for us? <laughs> Sure. So I am in Texas now, but I grew up in the Central Valley of California, okay. a very agricultural area. Many migrant workers lived in my town. Right. And um, so I had people from all over the world that were my friends. Many of their parents could not yet vote. Right. And I would hear the issues that they had and the want and the need and the longing to be able to vote. But my very favorite memory was I worked at the local fruit stand and it was Yamato Colony. It was a co-op of all of the local farmers, many of which, and it was started by Japanese American farmers that lived in the area. Mm -hmm. And every morning, the Japanese American farmer, old gentleman would show up with their coffee cup, well, show up with their cup and come and get the coffee that I made and sit around the table. And as I was out checking on the peaches and the sweet potatoes and making sure everything was right and ready for all the tourists that came down Highway 99 in California, I would off often sit and chat with them. Okay. One of the days they were sitting and looking at the local paper. This is before the internet, y'all. I'm old. So <laughs> Wendy's laughing. <laughs> so they, I asked what they were doing and they were looking at the local election, who to vote for and, and finding out about all the local people to, to, uh, with the possibility to vote for. And I'll get emotional because they talked about during World War II when all of them were interned in Japanese American internment camps, that most of their rights were stripped away. But the one thing, interestingly enough, was when it was voting time, they were still actually allowed to vote, but it was different. They didn't have the local news and the local newspapers that they were used to doing. These are very educated men. 
So they always knew the things about the people to vote for. But when they're in the internment camp, they didn't have that knowledge. They still went and voted with their best guess of who to vote for, hoping that when the war ended and they were released and able to go back to their homes, that those people would represent them in the best way. So that really brought home the need for me to really find out about the people, especially in my local elections, where from the school board to the city council to the local commissioners and the constables and the sheriff, whether or not those people represent me, represent my family, represent my neighbors, the people that I care about and love. And so that story just really brought home for me the need to make sure you get in find out about the issues, find out about the people, and make an educated choice. Oh, Roshana, you're, you're muted, I think. I got a little excited. I started talking too fast. <laughs> I agree. Thank you, Shay, for sharing. And I agree 100%. You have to know the candidates because, you know, they might target, like, I'm going to say Representative Burgos, for example, right? He's at the top of the ticket. He has followers. So then, you know, you have to make sure that he is in line with your vision, right? So I'm going to ask Representative Burgos, share with us why voting is important to you and or your fondest memory of voting. I think he's frozen. There you Hi. are. Hey, good afternoon. Hi. Hello. State Representative Danilo Burgos of the 197th Legislative District, right out of Philadelphia. Yes. I'm first generation Dominican American, raised in North Philadelphia, and I have the distinct honor of representing the area where I grew up in. Um, uh, a day like today, uh, where we honor Martin Luther King and, and we in, in, encourage our communities to vote, I remind, the first, remind myself the first time I voted. Uh, I did not know who to vote for, but my mother asked me to, to vote because she knew that at the age of 18, I can register and vote. And it managed to be uh, the, my first presidential vote was for, um, for Bill Clinton. That was the time when I was of age uh, to vote. Right. Um, but it's, it's also um, reminds me of, of giving, helping give voice to those that have uh, helped contribute to the growth and prosper prosperity of this country and each and every community across the United States of America, which are immigrants. In, in my case, my mother immigrated to, to the United States, to New York uh, in 1970. In 75, she, she got together with my father and they married and my sister and I became about that marriage. And fast, uh, fast forward to when I was 18, they still had not become uh, American citizens. They were legal immigrants, but couldn't, did not have a say in their communities and their community that they lived in at the time where they could not, um, they could contribute, they could pay taxes, but receive very little benefits. They could not say who was going to represent, who's going to be the voice for them. But the, my mother knew enough that she uh, made sure that I registered to vote and yeah. understood the importance of voting. Um, so it's, it's up to all of us uh, to remind all of our communities the, the importance of voting. Um, all, far too often, all throughout America, in disenfranchised communities, in minority communities predominantly, um, you have uh, ten, less than 10% of the population dictates what's going to happen to the 100% of the population. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is, I mean, there's many of, of we can debate why this happens for, for, um, for days, but the importance is what are we going to do in our respective communities to change the narrative? to be the change that we want to see in our respective communities. Um, I always remind my, my, my constituents, my community members, my neighbors, that in Pennsylvania, we have an election every six months. And the most important ones are the judicial elections, then the municipal elections, and then the presidential elections. For years, our communities have been taught that the most important election is the presidential election. Unfortunately, yeah. it isn't. It's important, sure. right. but it's not more important than my city council and then the judges that are going to sit in the benches they're going to interpret the laws that I and my colleagues write uh, it, onto our communities. Right. Uh, so I, I thank Ms. Rodriguez for the work she's doing with the uh, National Parent Union. 
Um, my Northeast director, Ms. Guridi, uh, for inviting me and, and allowing me to be part in such a, a great platform where we're telling everyone, uh, uh, Americans, please stay involved, whether you're, you're, you're first generation or, or here forever, uh, since the beginning of time. Uh, this is about moving America forward. This is about um, helping understand that everyone counts. And that's why this is such a great country. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy your Martin Luther King Day. Uh, Part of my appearance, but I'm out and about various events in my community. Um, and I look forward to continue to work with, with the National Parents uh, Union. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. You too. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for your representation. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you. you. Awesome. So um, Representative Burgos did make Wendy's point. Whether you can vote or not, right, you still need to be able to be a contributor in the community. So that's that's really important. So we're going to go to Christy, our uh, delegate, Christy. Hi, all. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you in what is a very, very important conversation, mm -hmm. a very important day, and one of uh, NPU's priorities, right, getting families yes. to vote. Um, my name is Christy Moreno. I live in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm Nina and Emilia's mom, a proud NPU member and delegate, and I'm also in... Um, working in education advocacy for Latino communities here in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I, I assume I'm to share my first uh, memory or, or a favorite memory. Yeah, actually, anything that, that you want to share with the folks that'll get them also excited or yeah. teach them something. Well, my first time voting in the United States um, was uh, for the presidential election of 2000. Um, I actually grew up in Mexico City, Mexico. I have dual nationality, so I'm very privileged to be able to both uh, vote in both countries. Um, growing up in Mexico, civic engagement was very important, very much embedded in the culture um, that I was raised in. And so my first time voting actually was in Mexico. After that, when I came to the United States um, and as a U.S. citizen, the first time I voted was in 2000. Um, not the outcome that I had hoped for, but it was very exciting. Um, I was, uh, Colleen will appreciate this, I was living in Oklahoma back then, a tiny little town called Bethany, Oklahoma. And I remember, and this is very important for me to share because it's part of the work I do now. I had no clue. I knew I, who wanted, I wanted to vote for, I, I, I knew that um, I was very excited at the privilege of getting to vote in this country. Um, and I was a little lost, I will say, um, but I figured it out on my own, standing in line, kind of like, you know, big eyes, <laughs> not knowing exactly if I was doing the right thing, but I, I casted my vote and I was very excited about that. Um, ever since then, I have not missed a single election, whether it's been local um, or state or, or federal. And I take that very seriously to the point that um, my children come and vote with me. So I have years um, of going to the polls with my children. They get super excited and I even save my little stickers. <laughs> they get super excited of coming um, and, and voting alongside and making their own informed decision. Um, and so the work that I'm doing now in, uh, in my own city and my own state uh, definitely involves informing people of um, how important it is to vote. And in the case of many of our um, Latino families where maybe the grandparents or the parents um, are not citizens and cannot vote, uh, part of the education that we do is that your voice still matters, right? And you have children that can vote for you, your values, your priorities, your interests, what's most important to you and how important it is to engage with our representatives and, and have our representatives and all elected officials, senators and everyone to get to know the Latino community. Um, uh, this is uh, the effort that along the, um, alongside the organization that I'm working with, Revolución Educativa, uh, this year is gonna be critical in getting people registered to vote, going out to the community um, and informing people of the rights and the need to vote in their local, um, state and federal elections. So very excited this year, we will be having um, elections here locally. Um, and there's lots of work to do, lots of people that need to get registered and so happy that NPU gets to facilitate and help people get this done, whether it's checking their voter registration um, or getting registered. 
And um, please know that this is a privilege. This is very important. Like you all have been talking about, um, it is our present and it is our future. And mm -hmm. we must be represented at every single level. So um, please go out there, get registered, check your registration and connect with MPU if you have any questions. So thank you so much for allowing me to share. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. Very exciting. Yes, children need to vote and see the voting firsthand. So we're going to go to Colleen because we have about three minutes, two minutes. Colleen, share with us your enthusiasm, why voting is important and or your, your fondest memory of voting. Well, thank you so much for having me here today. I just love this um, the, yeah, this this opportunity to share the importance of voting. Um, I was in the Navy. Now, I like many of you, my mom talked a lot about her vote and going to vote. And I was in the Navy and I remember filling out my absentee ballot um, and, and sending it in and how empowering it was, mm -hmm. even though, you know, they, there's all the talk about those don't get counted or whatnot. I still cast my vote and it has stuck with me, the importance of voting. And I would take my kids and show my kids, but honestly, my fondest memory happened in this last election cycle. Um, I have a couple Navy friends still and a young lady, she was down visiting a friend and she was in the Navy and she was registered and she was talking, I know who I want to vote for, but I don't know how to do it. I said, let's go. And we pulled up where her polling place was, made sure she was registered, made sure she could go. I drove her down, explained the process on a sample ballot, just just told her, you know, I said, I'm not going to influence you in any way, but I want you to go in and, and go cast this vote. And we took pictures. She sent them to her parents. She was just so excited to cast her first vote during the presidential election. It was really just for me doing this work with NPU and knowing the importance of this Every Family Votes campaign and the importance of everyone getting out to vote and just knowing the pride that she felt being able to go and cast that vote and walking her through the process. I think we got there like 15 minutes before polls closed, you know, and she's like, there's going to be a line. And I said, you know, then you stand in that line. They can't turn you away once you're in line. You stand in that line and you cast your vote. And even, you know, some of the poll workers there, you know, they were like, this is so cool that you're taking the time out of your day to do this. And and I said, it's important. And it's important, not just in the big elections, but, you know, to reiterate those small elections. I try to vote in every single election, every every opportunity I have to vote in my community, I take to vote because it's those those things that affect the change nationally. When you're When you're voting in your community, you're making a difference in your community. Eventually, we will see that change when the public speaks. And I'm just honored to be able to vote. I'm honored to be a part of NPU and, and especially honored to be here today with all of you to share this important message with everyone. Thank you so much. And don't forget to click on the link because the link will tell you exactly what you need to do. If you're registered, if you're not registered, it will, it will tell you exactly what you need to do to get registered and get to the polls. Thanks, guys. Yes. Thank you, Colin, and thank you for your service. Yes, absolutely. Also, you click the link, you get the information, you reach out to your delegate on NPU because I can tell you, those of us on the Every Family Votes Committee, we're going to be coming to your town in one shape or form sometime before the midterm or the general election. So stay tuned and don't forget to vote. That is so very true. Everybody just, you know, we got delegates nationwide who want to connect with you. And this is a very important message of getting out that vote, um, checking your voter registration. When you click on that link, it will go to your state and then tell you everything you need to know, even what you need to get to actually vote. And there it makes it so easy, so simple to find out how to register to vote. I am so excited for our Power Hour Voter Registration Hour. How's everybody? Everybody fired up? <laughs> <laughs> I know I am. We are so excited for these everybody sharing their stories because this is what we want to hear. We want to encourage everybody to go get out that vote and encourage others to vote. Share this event. Even if this event is over, share it. Share it with your mama, your papas, your tias, your comadres, everybody. 
<laughs> we are ready. And then, like I said, don't forget to register to vote. We got a next Power Hour Disruptors coming up of our group here. Oh, we're going to bring them aboard um, to talk and share their stories. We got Representative Darisha Parker from District 198 Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Bernita Bradley, our very own NPU disruptor. She's our parent voice director. Uh, Tonya Drown from our NPU Midwest Regional Delegate as well as Ms. Christina Laster. She is from California, our MPU Director of Policy and Legislation. Welcome everybody. Thanks for coming in and sharing your story. Let's start off with Representative Parker. Can you please tell us, you know, share your story of why voting is important or your fondest memory of voting? Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me today. Um, it's always good to speak with um, the majority of, of women, especially people of all um, of color, um, because I know we are the women and that make things happen. And it's, it's always a pleasure to be around women who get it. And these are the crowds that I always come to, but I always like going to the crowds of the women who don't get it and some of the people who don't get it. And I'll tell you why I say that. Um, you're looking at an individual that sometimes you can't celebrate too early for those four men that ran against me I um, was the at the end. I was at the bottom. I was in last pace. But those of those who know we are a faithful people and we believe in a higher being, those that were f first became last and those that were last became first. And that is actually what happened with me. And that was an all a result of the mail-in ballot. So when I tell individuals that voting does not matter, I will let you know that is a lie. It does matter. And you have to make sure you participate every six months. I don't want to, to ever hear anybody saying there's not an important election. Every election is an important. I'll tell you why. You have individuals, now I'm about to be fired up. You got individuals on the other side of the aisle that's doing everything in their power to take everything away from you. You don't even have to take a shower. You don't even have to do those things. You can vote in your pajamas. That's what Commissioner Sabir says every time. And that is my talking point. You can vote in your PJs and bedroom slippers. We have made it so easy for individuals and they still, during this last general election, we had low voter turnout. I do not understand when individuals are doing everything possible to take everything away from you. They're trying to take away it in the Constitution. They're trying to take it on the higher Supreme Court. We're fighting for redistricting every possible thing because people don't vote. And this is what I'm saying. You have to vote. You have to. Individuals, yes. Did somebody die for your right to vote? Absolutely. If absolutely. So I do not have a level of tolerance for anybody at any given time to tell me that they did not vote. They're not going to get a pass from me because there is no reason for you not to vote when we've made it so easy for you at this given time. So I'm sharing with everybody, if you look like me, if you know people that look like all of us and you know that this is the time that you have to make sure your voting and your power takes control, then this is the time to do it. And we cannot be asleep. We have to be awake at a wheel on every given moment because it is that important. It is important that we vote every single time and we encourage everybody to vote. And if people now we're in a when we're in an age that people may not have may have questions and are, they are confused, you have all of the answers at your fingertips. And you have individual virtually like these this dynamic cast of women who will explain the process to you at any given moment. So why aren't people asking questions? Why are people taking this for granted? I don't know. But this is not the time for us to be asleep at the wheel. When we're talking about Pennsylvania, we're talking about what's at stake at this election. We have a governor's race. Yeah. We have a lieutenant governor's race. We have a U.S. Senate. We have Congress. We have state Senate. We have state rep. We have state committee. We have reapportionment. We have ward leaders and committee person. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did give you a mouthful. And that is a lot to swallow, and that's what's at stake at Pennsylvania. So I'm asking and I'm urging everybody. Normally, I say five people. Now, nah, this year, Take. at least at minimum, have at least 15 to 20 people on your Rolodex 
to make sure you encourage them and educate them about the get out the vote. That's what we have to do. And I appreciate all of you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hugs, love, and kisses. My name is State Representative Derisha Parker of the 198th District, and I'm excited to be here with all of you. Thank you, thank you. We're all fired up. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. We are fired up, right? So excited. Thank you, Representative Parker, for that fired up speech and you're sharing your story. It's so very true. We got to get out that vote, share that information. Doesn't matter. Vote in your pajamas now. Some states makes it very easy for you to register to vote. Um, so our next person that we were going to bring up to speak is Ms. Bernita Bradley. Let's get you up on board. Hello, everybody. Did oh I freeze? God. Uh, yeah, you did, but um, did you have something else to say? You good? I, I, look, you got us all fired up in this place, right? Like, I'm, I'm like ready to go out there and get some more people, like call people right now today. So what just came to mind to me is two things. Um, what was said was like vote in your pajamas, right? Like at all costs, vote. You know, we telling people don't go out the house in bonnets and all that kind of stuff. I don't care how you go out the house, vote, right? And then the fact that voter suppression is real. It is so real and we must combat that. So I, 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 my voter story, the year that I came, um, was able to vote was 1988. I'm telling my age, like it wasn't, it wasn't exquisite. Ronald Reagan was in the house and everybody wanted him out. He had another two years, right? So I was like, hmm, OK, wasn't excited. But what I will backtrack to is in, in school. I remember as a young child reciting the preamble, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, blah, blah, blah. And I remember taking all these, listening to my mom and and taking on all these messages to women I heard in my household uh, talking about voting and who was in who was in the cabinet and all this kind of stuff. And then I remember for my fifth grade trip, we went to the mayor's office and we sat down with the mayor in Highland Park. And I remember looking at this mayor. There was a house there that had been sitting in Highland Park for years that we had money to build for what we called our poorest citizens. And that house sat there. And every time me and my mom would walk past the house, my mom would just be like, this is a shame. This is a shame. And sitting in that mayor's office, he was sitting there and he made me think of Boss Hogg. He was like a black boss hog from out of off of Dukes and Hazard. Y'all remember him, right? Like nobody really liked him. And so I'm sitting there and I remember in fifth grade just saying, you don't like us, do you? And the teacher was like, oh, oh my God, right? <laughs> like, but I was like, you don't like us. Like we're little kids here. We're the poorest kids in the community sitting in your presence and you're sitting on your upper echelon and you're doing nothing for the citizens. Then I remember fast track and I'm telling quick stories just to get you to think about how we need to be thinking about voting, even our young people preparing them for voting. And so I remember being like 16 years old and there was a young lady by the name of Kim Hogan who was running for judge. And I remember helping to campaign at 16 years old. I didn't know what uh, outreach and organizing and all that. They asked us as some young people, do you want to pass out these flyers? And I remember being the longest person on the porch listening to old ladies' stories and, and people who, who were just isolated, like who were like, well, I, I don't really want to vote. And I'm telling them as a young person, can you vote just for us, right? Like this lady ain't going to lock up our young black boys. And I ain't know nothing about all of this stuff. But my passion was to make sure we had the right people in office, y'all. And so when it came time for me to vote, I was very excited because it is very important that we make sure we know who the right people are in office. We make sure that the people who are in office represent us. And so make sure you have your young people, your sisters, your brothers, everybody inspired to vote. So when their time comes to vote, they're there and they show up in your pajamas with 15 people and everything else. Right. So that's my vote story. Thank you so much, Bernita, for sharing that fired up story there. All right. I hope everybody's fired up. We got our next person, which is Tonya. Can you come on in and share your story? Tell us your fondest memory of voting or why voting is important for you to get others to vote in or to get others to actually register and vote. Well, I was sitting here trying to think when my fondest memory of voting is. 
And I believe when I was in grade school, we always had these mock elections. Um, so that was like my first voting experience of us trying to figure out in our school who was going to be president between Reagan and I don't even remember who he was running against at this point. Um, but then my first actual voting as an adult was for Bill Clinton. Um, but um, as I've gotten older, I, I, I view voting a little different than even when I was younger. Um, and I really, you know, we're going to just promote people looking into the candidates, there are so many ways that you can figure out what the candidate represents, what their ideas are, what their ideas for change are, what their ideas of policy are. So I really wanna just make sure that people understand, don't just go down and just mark on one party or this party or anything like that, but to really, really understand who those candidates are and making sure that they're choosing the ones that speak best for your community um, and what your community needs and what their wants are. Um, the information is out there, go to your Secretary of State's office, look through our toolbook. I'm sure there's resources all in there for you to figure out where the candidates stand on the issues that pertain to you and your community the most. And it's so important for us to really understand how these local elections really have to do with our lives. Most people want to just vote in the presidential election, which is great, but those local politicians um, have more to do with your day-to-day -day lives than the federal ones at any given level. So making sure that we're voting for school board and city council and your district seats, um, making sure that you really are making um, the people that represent the ideas for your community, making sure that they're there because they're going to have that interaction with you on a day by day basis. They're going to ones they're the ones that set the policy for your day to day lives in your state and in your area. So don't just think that every election is is you know voted on already and decided upon. Um, it really does take you to be involved to make sure that your voice is heard and to make sure that there's change for us. Thank you so much, Sam, for sharing your story. Let's move it on to Christina and Callie. Tell us your story. Hey, y'all. Uh, happy today, right? We here. We talking about this, and we gonna get this done. So, you know, I'm always excited about voting because I'm a political scientist, and I like to study whether people win or lose, whether people mad or not. What is the voting behavior? Why is the apathy there? What are the promises that are made that are not fulfilled? And why is it that we are consistently fighting for our legal freedoms to match our experience with freedom here in America? So let's talk about that for a second with relation to voting. But as a grandma, I want to invoke my grandma rights on today to say, y'all listen to grandma, okay? Listen to a grandmother who knows that people have come continually and generationally to our community with empty promises. So it's not going to just stop at let's go vote. We need to be civically literate to understand what are our rights dynamically. We need to be civically literate to understand governance structures, who is ruling over us, right? When you walk out the door, you need to know who's ruling over you and what are their rules. And do they align with your morals and values and ethics and freedom, right? Um, and if they aren't doing a good job, don't revote them in, okay? Don't continue to allow top-down dictations, uh, other uh, corrupt political maneuvering practices, kick them out of your community, right? Period. Do, I, I'm, I'm saying this at the uh, end of a year and a half battle with school boards. And I'm a school board trustee. So I want to put that out there into the grandma, listen to your grandma uh, story too, um, where parents have been denied their rights, but did you really know what your rights were or were you reactively responding, right? And, 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 and if you were able to proactively understand board policies, local governance structures, the way that all of that worked, why not you? you sit there and make the decisions for the children that you live next door to, okay? So I want to give an admonition and, 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 and a funny story, too, about um, an issue that happened here in California to talk about the importance of civic literacy. Um, excuse me, my uh, native Californians. I'm not trying to call y'all dumb today, but I am going to say something. Um, last election, we had a gas tax initiative, okay? What, how many people would vote for the gas tax to go up, okay? 
most people would say, you know what? I don't want more gas right now. We pay about five twenty-five dollars per gallon for gas. Californians voted for the gas tax to go up with the assumption that they were voting no for the gas tax not to be raised, okay? This is the importance of civic literacy, not accepting someone else's uh, story or statement or postcard that says you need to vote this way. You need to understand how those initiatives, valid initiatives read. What does yes mean? If I vote yes, what does that mean? If I vote no, what does that mean, right? So now everyone's mad because we're paying an extra tax and the people are like, who did that? Let's fire them. We did that, okay? We, the people did that. So listen to grandma, civic literacy is important. Here's the first step right here. You see this constitutional calendar from the uh, National Constitution Center, whatever you can do. It will remind you month by month. This month is the legislative branch month, right? Tells you how many people belong at the top. It will remind you month by month. Any little thing that you can do and introduce civic understanding and literacy to your children. That way, when we vote, we're not being hoodwinked, bamboozled, and lied to, and people manipulating through our neighborhoods. We are making fully informed decisions, understanding our rights, and being able to hold accountability behind the practices. And I'm not going to take no more time, y'all. Listen to Grandma and also the Director of Policy and Legislation here with National Parents Union. And have a lovely day today. All right. Well, we are fired up from that grandmother, Miss Christina. Thank you so much for that. You're so true. You know, research your ballot. Know what those candidates' priorities are so that they know that they align everything that represent not only you, but also your community. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your information. I hope that got everybody fired up. to Fired up. Very important. Ready for the vote. <laughs> Don't forget to vote. Listen, the, the ballot questions often go unvoted. So when it's unvoted, that means it's going to pass because people aren't voting against it. So she made a really, really good point there. Yes, she did. And yeah. um, follow so, go ahead. what it says on there, you know, go register to vote in our link. Go register. So we have like three minutes uh, or so, right, left. And it would be, you know appropriate, I suppose, if we bring in our super producer, Tafshir Cosby, who is the director of organizing here. We're going to hear from her. We're going to, um, Jackie, Jacqueline Slade is here. She's going to, again, uh, say how you can connect with her. I'll tell you a little bit quickly about myself, and Wendy will do the same. So if the super producer can join us, and before we go out, this power hour was awesome. Everybody gave their stories and their scenarios. Lots of good information and lots of resources here. So I will, since I'm already speaking, let me just go really quickly and say, I am Councilwoman Rashana C. Cosby here in the city of Linden. I am in my 12th year, fourth consecutive term in my reign as a councilwoman in the fifth ward. I also have been serving 10 years as an elected Democratic committee woman, and I am the Northeast Regional, one of two delegates here for National Parents Union in New Jersey. My fondest memory was in 2010 when I won my first election. I beat the incumbent who lied to us and did not represent our interests. After losing to him three years prior, we came back and we spanked him. And we only spent $3,522 and some odd cents. So we need to get everybody who is out here and enthusiastic. You help the elections, you, you know, you get it done or you run against them. Don't forget to vote. So let's hear from Tafshir. Hey, everybody. This is so awesome. I'm so fired up. I'm so ready to go. You guys just see me in the background. I was producing today. You didn't see me snapping my fingers. And yes, girl, and everybody who was on this uh, panel discussion today, everyone who knows me knows that voting is my jam. Everyone who knows me knows that I am always, always, always out here with the call, making sure that folks are registering, making sure you are educating yourself, and making sure that you're casting that ballot as a family, right? Like, do it together. Everyone in your house who is able to vote should cast that ballot, whether it be in person, whether it be vote by mail. You know, make sure that you are educating yourself about who your candidates are, 
who's currently in office, right? Like Rashana said, she's a sitting council member. You have people who are running to be reelected. Know what they're about. Know what they promised you, right? Like know what they promised you the first time that you voted them in and make sure that you're paying attention to what they're going to promise you as you vote them in this time, specifically the school board. Make sure you know who was on your school board. If you have not already, check out our campaign, our epic campaign, Everyday Parents Impacting Change. It talks about the way the effort funding is being spent. Those are votes, right? You voted those school board members in. That is your local vote. Please make sure you go out and register. Please make sure that you vote. And every family votes in every election, every time. So now let's go to Wendy. Actually, I'm going to pass mine to Jacqueline oh. because we've Jacqueline. been doing all this packing. Let, let, let's, yes. let's, let's hear from let's you, hear Jacqueline. Let's hear from the youth. From the youth. Hi, <laughs> I'm Jacqueline. I'm a student at Johns Hopkins University. I'm 19, so I'm going to talk about student voting. So basically, a lot of people in the age group of 18 to 24 don't vote. But in many states, you can register. Sometimes you can pre-register at the age of 16. In Maryland specifically, you can vote starting at 17 if you're going to be 18 by the primary. So um, students, make sure you get out there and vote. Your vote really matters and your voice matters. Even if you don't think it does, your voice matters. And a lot of elected officials are actually looking at you when they're trying to gain votes. So make sure you go out and use your voice and go vote. So very true. So very true. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, I am Wendy gonzalez Neal, the Texas delegate. Uh, for National Parents Union. Um, it is so true in Texas, You, um, for even young voters like yourself, Jacqueline, you would have to be 18. But in Texas, we can actually set up reminders when you go in and vote Texas, we'll send you a reminder to say, hey, make sure you know they'll send you those deadline dates, when to go register to vote. And that's actually for anybody, but I'm, I'm actually saying this for, because I, I practiced that with my son so that he made sure he was registered to vote when he became aged, you know, when he turned 18. My fondest memory is um, when it came to voting, and I'm going to say it really quick because I know we're running out of time during our power hour, um, is I was one of those people that didn't think my vote mattered. I was actually stopped by a parent at an event. She told me that one vote can make a change. And not only that, your voice will be heard. You cannot say anything unless you are registered to vote to make that change, you know, right? So when I became a registered voter, I learned so much out there and I encourage others to vote. And those of you that cannot vote, guess what? Just like everybody says here, take them to the poll. When your child comes to age and they're able to register to vote, that's one way you can encourage that. We encourage everybody to go and do that registration to vote. Check your registration to see if everything you got to register to vote. Everybody, thank you so much for joining our Power Hour. Everybody fired up, and I hope you pledge with the National Parents Union to register to vote. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you. When we all vote, thank we you. win. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and thank you to all of our panelists. This was amazing. Have a great day, everybody.